Hello and welcome to this first installment of this new tip series from BlenderCookie.com on how to use all the different modifiers in Blender 2.5. As many of you know, there are a lot of different modifiers in Blender, and in fact we can go ahead and just take a look at a list of all the different ones here. Everything from the array, to booleans, to masks, to curves, to explodes. There's a lot of them here, and there's a lot of information that goes along with them. So in this new series, we're going to work to cover each and every single modifier one at a time to show you how it's used, what it's used for, and to show some examples of how it can be used. So today, we're going to start by covering the array modifier. The array modifier is a wonderful tool for creating a lot of different things. And in a nutshell, what it does is gives you an easy system to replicate objects in a new number of different ways. I'm going to show you three examples today. Namely, one is a pillar, pillar, or how to create a series of pillars, say, in a long hallway, or in a large chamber, or anything like that, where you've got multiple copies of the same pillar. Next, I'll show you a, an example of how you can create things like uh, non-kink tubing, or any other kind of tube or tube-shaped object that has detail al replicated along the entire way. And then finally, I'll show you an example of something that's pretty common, something that we've looked at before, but is very commonly used in the CG world, and that is a simple chain. And what this will do is each one of these will demonstrate a different aspect of the array modifier. So first, let's go ahead and look at the pillar. The pillar here is just, you know, it's a very simple pillar. And what we want to do is just add an array modifier to it. So we'll just choose add modifier and array. Now on this, you'll immediately notice one thing. First off, it's duplicated the pillar and placed it immediately to the right of it along the x-axis exactly one unit across. Now you'll notice that it's both one blender unit away from the edge here, but it's also two units away from the origin. So really the new pillar is placed two blender units away from the new one. And if we hit tab to go into edit mode, you'll notice that the second one, the copy, is grayed out and the original one is still there in its original form. And something else you'll notice is that if we scale this down or modify it in any way, the new one copies it exactly. And this is where the power of the array modifier is very, very useful. It allows us to easily replicate objects in, a new, in numerous different ways. So this first one is by default using the relative offset. And you'll notice there's several different options such as the constant offset, relative offset, object offset, merge, first last, distance, start cap, end cap, and then also the fit type and the count. So starting at the top, let's go ahead and look at, in the pillar example, we'll look at the constant offset and the, fit, the count number. So first, if we just increase the count, you'll notice that it increases the total number of pillars. And again, on each one of these, just remember that it's always referencing back to the original copy. Now, the relative offset is very useful because what it does at, at x of 1, or y, or z, it takes the boundary edge of your mesh and replicates it exactly that distance. So from this side of my mesh to this side of the mesh is the total distance it will move the new pillar across, which in this case is exactly two units. If I increase this value, you'll notice that it slides further and further apart. And you'll also notice that if I hit tab to go into edit mode and scale this down, it scales all the other pillars down towards the center as if I were scaling multiple objects. This is because the relative distance from left to right across the x-axis is getting smaller and smaller. And so the total distance each one is replicated across also gets smaller and smaller. Now this is different if I switch to, say for example, the constant offset. And if I set the constant offset first to one, you'll notice that it moves over exactly one blender unit, which in this case is half the width of the pillar. So if I wanted to move this exactly next to each other, then I would want to set this to two. And now you'll notice it's exactly the same as the relative offset. But one of the differences that you'll notice is that if we go into edit mode and scale this down, the position of the pillars does not change because it's set to constantly offset at two blender units in, in the x direction. As with the relative offset, you can also increase this along the y direction, along the z direction, or the x direction in any way that you want. So this gives you full control over each, all three axes in the way that it's set. So if I wanted to, say, create a long column of hallways, well, I might just go ahead and set this to 10, or 10. And I could create a room around all of these 
to then have these pillars within a long hallway or chamber or anything else like that. So this is a very good use for the array modifier in the case of pillars. Well now let's go ahead and look at the next object and this is just on layer two. And in this case, I have a single piece of a kind of a non-kink tubing. And what I wanna do for this on the array modifier, such that it's al always connected, I'm gonna go ahead and use the relative offset for this one. Because this way, no matter how I scale this down, my tubing will still stay connected. Whereas if I use the constant offset and set this to one, it wouldn't always stay connected. So if I adjusted the size of my cubing, or tubing after using the array modifier, it wouldn't work. Well, then I can also go ahead and just increase the count any way that I want, which is also a good time to introduce the fit type. There's three different ones. There's fit curve, which allows you to control the length of this uh, based on a curve. So for example, if I set this to fit curve and go in here and hit shift A, or excuse me, leave out of one first and hit shift A, add in a curve and a path, and I set this fit curve to point to that path, then I can define the length of my tubing based on the length of the path. So as I m increase the length, it increases the total number of uh, arrayed objects. So this is a very handy method to quickly get an exact number. Next, we also have the fit length. So we can just tell this exactly how long we want it to be. And notice that if I say increase this to just a small amount, it's only going to add another piece every time I hit an exact blender unit, so an exact value of one. And this is because the relative size of my object is exactly one. If I set this to constant offset and take it down, then you'll notice that you know, it'll increase uh, each point as well. So this is another way that we can increase or use the, the total length of this. But then a lot of the times, the two that I find most commonly used are the fit curve and fit count. So these both work very easily. But let's go ahead and introduce another part of the array modifier, and that is the start cap and end cap. And so let me just hide this object and then unhide this end cap and start cap pieces that I've created. And what these are, are basically two different pieces of tubing that would then fit into my original piece, which you can see right here that I have an open-ended cap and an open end here. So if I wanted to say create an entire piece of tubing or a hose with this, well then I would want to go ahead and change the way that the start or end is, is created. Now in this case, this isn't, isn't really a piece of tubing more as a rod since they're solid caps, but this allows me to actually add in these other pieces dynamically to the start and the end of my array. And the way that it works is by just choosing the start cap to be, in this case, the start cap, and you'll notice that immediately just added in right there. And then the end cap, we'll just choose to be the end cap, and again, immediately adds it in. Now, there's a little bit of trickery in terms of how this works, because a lot of people will find that it's very confusing initially to work with the start and end caps because it doesn't work as intuitively as you would think. And the reason being is that the start cap needs to be positioned with the origin. All the origins should be in the exact same spot, but the start cap's mesh itself should be at the end position. So we would position it at the end of our piece here, and then the end cap is going to be on the opposite end at the start. And I don't exactly know why this is, but basically imagine that you were to flip this a hundred or 180 degrees across the axis or just mirror it, and that's where the start and end would be. So this is always going to be on the opposite side, and this will always be on the opposite side. And so as long as you can remember that, then you'll find that it works very, very well and accurately. But let's go ahead and look at one more thing with the array modifier here, and that is the merge. Currently, you'll notice with the start and end caps, the vertices here are not merging together. So we actually have duplicate vertices. And if we were to go ahead and apply this modifier, you would notice that that is in fact true. So what we want to do is enable this merge option, which will immediately merge all the vertices that are underneath or limited to no more than 0.01 blender units. You'll notice the end cap is also added. And if we go ahead and apply this now, you can see that each one of these vertices has been merged together. So this allows us to use the start and end cap very well, but it does something else as well. And what it does 
is merges these vertices right here as well. So you'll notice that at each start of a new segment, they're not merged. But if I merge it there, then it does in fact merge. And to merge the vertices in the first and last duplicates, this is if you're going in an entire circle. If you rotate it all the way around using some other techniques, then you would want to do that. Now, let's go ahead and leave this example where it's at and look at the final one, which is a single chain. And so here I have a single chain link. And what I want to do is to replicate this along to create an actual chain. And well, the way that we would do this is add in the array modifier, and then we would want to choose object offset. And the reason we want to do this is because we can actually tell Blender to use a object as the total distance based on the distance from this origin right here, and also to accept the rotation. When only using the constant and relative offset, there's no way to add any rotation to your to your arrayed objects. But with an object offset, we can in fact do that. So we're going to hit Shift A and just add in an empty. This way, the empty won't render whenever we go to render our scene, but we can use it to control this. And you'll notice it's just called empty. So let's just call this chain underscore empty. Select our object, and then under the object offset, choose chain empty. Immediately you'll notice nothing has changed. But if we click on the empty here by right clicking, and then hit G and X or any other direction, you'll immediately notice it has full control of this other, this second link. So this is very cool. So in the case of the chain, we could just move it out to be right about there. And then we can go ahead and hit R to rotate around the X axis 90 degrees and give us that rotation. This is very, very cool. But what's even cooler is that each one of these links will then inherit this same rotation. So for every link that it's added, it will be moved this exact distance, so that's one and a half Blender units, and be rotated around the x-axis 90 degrees. So if we now increase the array, you can see exactly what happens, giving us a near perfect chain that we could then go ahead and manipulate in a number of other ways, such as with a curve modifier, which we'll look at uh, in as soon as we get to it. Because remember, we're going to look at these one by one. As soon as we get to the curve, then we'll be able to see exactly how that works. So here's three different examples using pillars, some tubing, and a chain to use the array modifier in a number of different ways to accomplish different tasks that otherwise would be very repetitive and mundane.